Hey everyone, my name is Emily. Welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. Before we get into the details of this video, I really, really quickly wanted you to see this bridge. It's a straight bridge. This is not something that we always see, so I wanted to get it on footage. I want you to look where it says clearance at center. That is about nine foot. I know that my boat cannot fit under anything less than eight foot six inches. So I know that I can go under this. When you have a straight bridge like this, it's nine foot across the whole thing. Even though it says clearance at center, guys, this bridge is straight across. We even lowered our riggers because I wasn't sure if I was gonna make this bridge. When you get a chance, Amanda, turn the camera around so they can see the riggers that are lowered. Sketchy, right? <laughs> I'm really glad that I was able to start that video really quickly like that. But guys, now that we're out of that bridge and you guys got to see that, the whole purpose of this video is to give you some tips to navigating the intercoastal waterways, including bridges, channel markers, how to call a bridge, pretty much what we just did. So we're gonna go through a few steps for you and let's get this video going. Amanda here, Emily already introduced herself. We just left Boathouse Marine Center because we were down a starter on our port motor. It was a sad day, but we knew it was coming because it had already happened to our starboard motor. So the day it happened, we actually called it in the morning. We turned that thing on and I said, you know, that starter's gonna go. And that afternoon, the starter went. So we're just thankful to Boathouse Marine for getting us turned around really quick. This video, we are gonna be going over some intercoastal navigation. So we just showed you reading minimum bridge height on a flat bridge. And I just wanted to point out that when you're reading bridge heights, it's, you gotta pay attention if it's a flat bridge or an arched bridge. If your bridge is arched, it will probably say minimum height, which means it's the lowest part. So you can usually add five feet in the center. We're gonna go ahead and show you a bridge like that so you can kind of get an idea. But that's something important to pay attention to is knowing the height of your boat for the bridge you can fit under. We're also gonna go over some channel markers today. We're gonna to go over red right returning, uh, what it means, what shapes to look for, what numbers to look for, and we're gonna go over some wake zones. Right here, if you look right there, that is a no wake zone sign. It says idle speed, no wake, and that sign is referring to this smaller body of water. We are exiting from a smaller body of water, a side channel, into the ICW. So this is now the ICW. So if we were in the ICW making that turn, we know that that sign is referring to that body of water. But what I really want to point out is this one right here. This is our no wake zone sign referring to the ICW. This says slow speed, minimum wake, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. weekends and holidays, 25 miles per hour all other times. You also have to pay attention to the top of that sign says manatee zone, November 15th through March 31st. No wake zone signs can be tricky, especially in the ICW, because there are different times of year, different daytime, nighttime, weekends, holidays, so you really have to pay attention to them and read them. Unfortunately, that's the best advice I can give you for that. If you're ever in doubt, go with a no wake zone, that way you don't get in trouble. Also, don't pay attention to what other people are doing because they will not realize that this is a no wake zone in the winter time when the manatees are around and they will fly through here. Do not follow the leader out here. Would you follow them off a cliff? No, so don't follow them off of the cliff. It's December, by the way. It's December, by the way. Emily just reminded me. What day is today? It's December. It's December. It's December. She doesn't even know what day. It's, it's the second, it's I think. December 2nd, we think. So um, I was wrong. But it's December. We are coming up now on our first channel marker. We are now coming up on our first channel marker. Right there, we have a red triangle. And if you look closely, I will get a picture for you somehow. That red triangle has a yellow triangle inside of it. Those yellow triangles inside the red triangles mark the ICW. So if we had a green square on our right side, and when we find our next green square, I will show it to you, that green square will have a yellow square inside of it, which marks the ICW. Your red and your green markers in the ICW will have a yellow square or a green square inside of it. A really good rule of thumb is if you're traveling and you see a red marker and a green marker, if you see them both, just stay in between the two. It's that simple. Stay between the two. That marks the main channel. 
Something to think about though is everyone talks about red rate returning, but what does that mean? Red rate returning means when I am returning from a bigger body of water to a smaller body of water, the red markers are on my right or my starboard side. So if I am traveling from the ocean into an inlet, the red markers are on my right. If I am traveling from the ICW into a smaller finger channel, the red markers are on my right. But we have to remember if we were going to turn around and I'm heading offshore or away from the smaller channels into the ICW, the red markers are on my left. You said starboard side and before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I know you guys might have seen our other video on basically it was a how to drive a boat video, which we'll link for you, but starboard is the right and port is the left. Left is port because P-O-R-T-L-E-F-T, -E four letters, port for left, four letters. Another trick that some people do is when there's nothing else left, you drink port. I personally have never had port wine, so I can't really relate to that one, but a lot of people use that one. Another thing to keep in mind about red right returning is yes, it's bigger a water to smaller body of water, but that applies to both sides, the Atlantic and the Gulf. If you're on the Atlantic side and you're coming into an inlet or whether you're in the Florida Keys coming in or you're up on the East Coast somewhere coming in, it's going to be red right returning. So your red markers are going to be on your right side. Same thing if you're in the Gulf of Mexico and you're coming towards the state of Florida or towards Texas, it's going to be red right returning. The red triangles are on your right. The green squares are on your left. I also want to add that something to think about is that the red markers identify the U.S. side. So what that means is that if I'm traveling in the ICW and I'm traveling north, the red markers are on my left because that is the land side. The green markers are on my right because that is the offshore side. Now that's, think about that on the east coast of Florida, we have red markers on our left marking the, the, the land side and the green markers on the right of the ICW marking the offshore side. But if we were to go around down the Florida Keys and up to the west coast of Florida, now the red markers are gonna be on, assuming I'm traveling north, red markers are gonna be on my right, marking the inshore side of the state and the green markers marking the offshore side of the state. So the red markers always mark the big piece of land. So the state of Florida is a big, what is it? Peninsula. It's its own peninsula. <laughs> so the red markers are gonna mark down the east coast and up the west coast. So the red markers are doing a big outline on the state of Florida. So if you're traveling north or south, you have to think about, well, which side is the land on? And that's gonna tell me where the red markers are and where I need to keep them. Here we are coming up on our next no wake zone sign. This has idle speed, no wake. If you see, it's very clear. There are no exceptions to it. There's no time of year. There is no day, week, month about this. So what that means, this is an idle speed no wake zone 365 days of the year 24 hours of the day a really good rule of thumb is we can pay attention we are approaching a bridge any single almost every bridge unless it's a massive bridge it's going to be a no wake zone especially in the fort lauderdale area so idle speed no wake all right we're approaching our bridge so let's say it was the summertime and i was i was going fast back there but i'm approaching my bridge it's time for my no wake zone question is can we fit underneath this bridge if I look on the side markers right there, it says nine and a half feet, which means I can make it. Now what that means is it's nine and a half feet at the minimum clearance. If you pay attention to the bridge sign, minimum clearance, nine and a half feet. I know I can make it under nine and a half feet on a bridge that we're straight across. This bridge has an arch, so I can add two or three feet to it. If this bridge were too low for me to get under. You see that blue sign right there? That tells me what radio channel I need to go on. And the green sign tells me what the name of the bridge is. If I couldn't fit under that bridge, let's say that bridge had a seven foot clearance and I know I cannot fit under a seven foot clearance. I can look for that blue sign, which tells me on my radio, I go to channel nine and the green sign tells me the name of the bridge and that's Atlantic Boulevard Bridge. So what I would do is I would pick up my radio and I would say, First of all, I'm traveling northbound. I would say Atlantic Boulevard Bridge, this is Gale Force, traveling northbound, requesting your next opening. That is the best thing to say. Some of them will open on demand. Some of them will give you a time, say we'll open at the 45, at the 15 on the hour, and you'll have to sit and wait for that bridge to open. But what you do is you look at that blue sign, you figure out the channel, channel nine, you look at the green sign, figure out the name of the bridge, Atlantic Boulevard. You say Atlantic Boulevard Bridge, 
gale force traveling northbound for your next opening. If I were traveling southbound, I could say southbound. If I didn't have a name on my boat, I could say 32 Intrepid traveling northbound. If I were a sport fish, I didn't have a name. I would say sport fish. Basically, you just need to identify your boat so that they know who they're opening the bridge for. Coming up on our next slow speed wake, minimum wake sign. So we just left that bridge and we know when we're leaving a bridge, it's almost always a minimum wake. So we're coming up on our next sign, which is gonna tell us we're far enough away from the bridge. What are we allowed to do now? Now, it is the winter time. So this says slow speed minimum wake, November 15th through March 31st, which means for us, we have to continue our slow speed. But if we were in the middle of June, we could go fast and we could go fast to that next bridge before having to do another slow speed minimum wake. Go ahead, you can look at, that is the other side of the sign that we are passing. So that would tell us that if we were traveling southbound on the ICW towards this bridge, we would see that sign and it is telling us year round we have to go slow. But because we are traveling northbound and we read that sign, if it were June or July or the summertime, this is an area that we could go fast because it is the winter and we are in a manatee season, which means the manatees come into the intercoastal this time of year, we have to go slow. We are coming up on our next bridge. We have another slow speed minimum wake sign. We are already going a slow speed minimum wake because we are in winter time and it's a manatee zone. So we are just gonna continue going slow. We're gonna come up to this bridge read the minimum height of it and figure out if we can fit under it. If you look right here, the minimum clearance sign says minimum clearance, that's about 11 and a half foot minimum clearance, which means right here at the lowest side, it's a minimum clearance of 11 and a half feet. But in the center, we know we have more clearance than that. If you guys have been on the ICW, you'll know that sometimes it can get a little crowded and there can be a lot of boats coming at each other head on and sometimes it's questionable what do you do the obvious typical answer is kind of like driving a car go to your right stay in your right lane however it's the water it's like the wild wild west out here guys so those yeah. laws and rules don't really apply so a good thing to do when you have a boat coming at you is to make an obvious and dramatic turn to a direction so if i have a boat coming head on and it's kind of like, oh, I don't really know. It's a little bit awkward on either side. Just obviously make sure they start to see that side of your bow. And then they'll know. They'll be like, okay, they're going to the right. I'm going to go to the right. Or vice versa. If going to the left is easier for that setting, make an obvious dramatic turn to that left side. And then they'll know what you're trying to do. Something else to think about when it comes to right of way. So the smaller vessel without the motor always has the right of way. If you have a kayaker or a paddle boarder, they have the right of way. We got a big sporty coming through. They take up more space. It's a lot harder for them to squeeze over. So we are going to be respectful. We are going to get towards the right side of the ICW and give this sporty more room. We are going to respect their space. Whether it were a big yacht, a big sport fish, we always like to give the bigger boat more room because they got a lot. I mean, you don't want them hitting the docks. They got a lot more weight to them it's more difficult for them to squeeze in a tight location additionally if you see a sailboat traveling and they are not using their motor they're sailing they're using the wind to control where they're going you have the motor you need to let that sailboat go ahead of you or give them the room that they need or pass them respectfully sailors are going to have a harder time if they're traveling with the wind having good control of their boat so if you have the motor you need to respect they have the right of way it's the same thing, like I said, for paddleboarders and kayakers. They have the right of way, they don't have a motor, but in my experience, most paddleboarders and kayakers will be respectful to you and they will understand that you're trying to get somewhere and they will usually pull out of the way. So obviously what the law is and what the right thing to do respectfully is, it's a fine line. Just always, always be on the lookout, pay attention to what's going around you, who the bigger boat is, who's traveling down current, there's someone traveling down current, they're gonna have less control than you. These are all things to take into effect, being that we are, have both have a lot of experience and we're charter boat captains. We need to make sure we're giving more people the right of way more often because they probably don't have as much experience. Maybe it's their first time on a boat. And this is our <laughs> hundreds of thousands, I have no idea. A lot. A lot of days into this. So I know how to I know that I can handle being in a tight space if I need to, but maybe that 
family that's on the boat for their first time, they're not. So just keep that thing, keep those things in mind. Here we go, we have a green marker on our right. That is the first green marker we are seeing today. You can see the green is a square. The green markers are squares, they have odd numbers. The red markers are triangles, they have even numbers. And the ICW markers will have either a yellow triangle or a yellow square inside of it. So our green ICW marker with an odd number has a yellow square inside of it. That marks that I am in the ICW. If you see that yellow square or that yellow triangle inside your marker, you know you're in the ICW. We made a bit of a detour just so you guys could see that green marker. And I just turned around and I'm now going southbound on the ICW, which means that the inshore side is that side. So I'm gonna have the green on my left and the red on my right. Something that I do wanna point out is that sometimes there won't be pilings like this but there will be buoys and you need to look for those guys. There'll be green floating buoys that I'll have pictures pop up for you and there'll be red ones. You will apply the same applications to them. A couple things to consider if you're A, colorblind or you're driving at night. The green ones are always gonna be squares, sometimes referred to as a can, and the red ones are always gonna be triangles, sometimes referred to as a nun. So if it's dark and you can't see, that shape is all you need. Don't worry about the color. Shape is important as well. There's also numbers on them, and the numbers at the same time, I wouldn't get too caught up in that. I would pay attention to the colors. The numbers just go in an order based on the further inland you go. Like if you're going up into finger channels, those numbers are gonna start going up, ascending. And then if you're coming from a finger channel out, they're gonna start going down. If you guys have any questions, please post them in the comments. Let us know your thoughts. What do you wanna know about red, right, returning? triangles, squares, cans, nuns, bridges, all of it. Post them in the comments. We'll do our best to take our time and answer them individually. We're about to be at our dock, or our slip, I should really say. Thank you for watching, for supporting our channel. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and make sure you follow Gale Force Twins on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok.